I'm Steve from This Week With Cars and this is Barn Sprite number three. This is the last of the six Barn Sprites that I found in a barn that I have yet to touch in any way. I think it's been a year and a half or maybe two years since I found these cars. I'm surprised that it took me this long to get through them all. But finally, here we are at the last one. Let's take a quick look around it. On the front, we immediately can see that we're missing the hood emblem and we're missing the right front turn signal. Down here on the bumper is an air defense command. Looks like it's from 1966. This would have been used to get into the Air Force Base. You would put that somewhere on your car, usually the bumper. Was it possibly an Air Force pilot that owned this car at one time? Along the sides, these are not the correct wheels. I think these are American racing wheels. They're also unilugs, so the holes that the lug nuts go through, those are not a round hole. They're actually oval so that this wheel can fit a multitude of different bolt patterns. This car has the side curtains on it as well as one of the factory hardtops. Now I'm thinking that I'm going to sell this car with the factory hardtop on it. It would be the first of the six sprites that I've sold that way. Let me know below if you think I should sell the hardtop with the car or if I'm better off either keeping it or selling it separately. Around back, the rear end is covered in bird droppings, but it looks like it's all there. On the inside, the car actually looks pretty nice. That's carpet that's been put in the doors. There's also carpet on the floor. This originally would have been a rubber mat. The seats look in decent shape. There's a convertible top. And I can see there, there's actually the missing turn signal right there. So we don't need to order one of those and there was a radio installed at one point. So there's a big hole in the dash. From here, this looks like a pretty decent car. Here under the bonnet, things look a little worse. You can definitely see the signs of this thing having sat for a long time. We are missing the air cleaners. So I'm a little concerned about the engine and the carburetors. The brakes, that master cylinder is super rusty. I doubt that that might not even move at all. And things only get worse over on the passenger side. Look at this gigantic mouse nest here by the regulator and the fuse box. You can only imagine if there's any insulation left on those wires at all. But I'll get that cleaned up and we'll find out. But the good news is, minus the battery, the little ducting for the heater there, and the air cleaners, it looks like it's all here and intact. The first thing I'm going to address on this car is these wheels and tires. The tires are too wide. They actually hit the inner fenders when you're at full lock. So I'm going to put a set of the original correct type of wheels, tires, and this is the correct wheel cover onto this car so that it not only looks proper, but it works correctly. You can see the oval shaped holes here. This is called a unilug wheel and it can fit on wheels that are a four bolt pattern with the stud space between here and here. Doesn't look like a lot of space, but that actually means that it can fit a variety of different cars. If anyone is interested in these wheels, I'll probably throw them up on eBay. So comment below if anyone is interested in these. The lug nuts that were on those wheels are meant for aluminum style wheels, so I will have to switch to the original style lug nut to use these original wheels. There was a set of spacers on these wheels. You can see it there. It's probably eighth of an inch not very much of a spacer. You might have also done it to center the wheel properly because they would not be centered properly with the lug nuts. So the spacer might be doing that as well. Let's get this cleaned up and see what's lurking under here.
Well, I think we found who was living in there. Say hello to my little friend. Luckily, it looks like maybe there's a couple little nibbles on these wires, but it was only on the fabric part. It did not go through the insulation. So at first glance, the wiring appears to be okay. Now I'm feeling confident enough to put a battery in. The ground wire would normally connect here, and I don't see the other hot wire either. So both of those have been removed. I'll need to get those. And uh, looks like we have one more friend hiding in here. I guess this is its mate. Both of them have been... This one is actually very well mummified. It looks like all the bones are stuck together still, even the tail there. Anyways, let's get a battery in here. These cars were, of course, positive earth. So I'm going to put my positive side over here where we're going to connect a wire to the chassis. I'm going to connect the hot lead first. Now I'm going to touch the ground for just a second, see if there's any spark. There's not. So nothing is turned on, nothing's shorted out. I'm going to leave this one hand tight just in case I need to pull it off quickly if something happens. Before I try to crank the engine over, let's take the spark plugs out. See just how bad it is in there. You see how old these ignition wires are. The boots are just completely cracked, almost falling completely apart like this one has. Now let's take the boroscope, put it down in the cylinders, see what they look like. So this is cylinder one. There is some some corrosion on the cylinder walls there. Not completely horrible. There's cylinder two. There's cylinder three. Not sure what I'm looking at in here. Okay, cylinder three look like it might be corroded the worst we've seen so far. cylinder four. So the bad news is there's some corrosion in there, which you would expect for a car that's been sitting this long. The good news is it does not look like the mice have gotten in there and filled the cylinders with anything or gotten in there and uh, had their urine corrode everything a whole lot worse than it could be. So I'm going to put some oil in the cylinders and we'll see if the engine will turn over at all. I put a little bit of ATF in each of the cylinders. It's a full bottle, so it didn't pour like it should, even though I put a nipple on it. Made a little bit of a mess here. Now I've put the car into gear. I'm just gonna grab the front tire and I'm going to try to rock the car back and forth. And that should turn the engine over if the engine is free. If not, I either won't be able to push it or I'll start skidding the rear tires on the ground. Okay, it was just torquing the engine there, so the engine might be stuck. The first gear I tried was first gear. I'm gonna try fourth gear now. I will have to move it further to turn the engine over, but it might be enough torque to break it loose. I think for now we'll quit. We'll leave the fluid inside the engine and I'll keep topping it off as needed. And we'll see if the fluid starts working its way between the cylinder and the pistons and freeze them up. And then in a later video, I can come back and see what the results are. 
Sometimes things don't go as planned, and when you're dealing with an old car, you never know what you're going to find when you start to work on it. In my experience, if the air cleaners are missing, you're going to have a much harder time getting the engine going again. The air filters actually work as a very good barrier for dust, animals, and water from getting into the engine. If you have any tips on what you would like to see me try to get this engine freed up, comment below. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.